All right, everybody, welcome back. If it's your first time coming across to one of my videos, my name's Chris, and I'm back here today with the Woodland Mills HM126 portable sawmill. What I'm gonna be up to today is demonstrating how the blade tracking works on this sawmill. I've had a request to do that, so I'm happy to oblige. Now, the one thing I will say, just in case this is your first time watching one of my videos, I have mentioned it as much as possible before, but I just really wanna emphasize that I am not an expert or professional in any way. I'm just a guy with a sawmill. I've had it for about nine months. And you know, if somebody wants to see something, see how it works, I'm happy to do the best job that I can to show you that. Um, as long as you understand that this isn't an expert opinion or anything. Um, like I said, I just a uh, average Joe with a sawmill and I'll show you anything you want to see so if that's something that you're interested in i'm gonna hop right into it do the best i can for you and i uh, hope you enjoy so not having owned this mill or any bandsaw mill for a great extended period of time i do remember what it's like to not really know much about them so i'm going to try to keep my explanation as simple and basic as possible just so that everybody watching this can try to understand so the first thing I'll just basically go over, you know, what blade tracking is and why it matters. And you can see that you have two cast iron wheels here, and that's what your blade spins around, obviously. So tracking is that you adjust these wheels because if you think about it, for this blade to stay spinning around both of them, they have to be perfectly in line with each other. If one's way out in front of the other one, then the wheel's gonna slip off. If one is at an angle to the other one, you know, left, right, up, down kind of thing, all, all those factors will cause the blade to slip off. I think that should be, fairly obvious. So. All right, so the two cast iron wheels that you have here, what's the difference? This is the drive wheel. You can see the belt that goes around that. The engine spins this wheel, and this wheel's just a idler follower wheel. It, it just spins with the tension of the blade on it. Um, so for tracking purposes, you should never have to worry about this one. I'll show you the sticker on the back of this. And here it is. It says factory set, do not adjust tracking. And you can see that there are some bolts on there, that it is possible to move this, but it has been set by the factory. And I would recommend never touching this unless absolutely necessary. And I would never touch it without calling Woodland Mills first. Um, they're great people there, very helpful, and I would strongly recommend calling them first to see what their recommendations are before you ever touch this. That's the only time I would ever touch this is if Woodland Mills directly told me to. This here is the wheel that you're meant to adjust if you can't get the blade tracking right. And in my experience, I have never had to touch this one either. I did when I first got the mill, just because I was really curious. And you know, when you, you're like a kid with a new toy, you wanna to play around with it. So I adjusted a bit and moved, I saw the blade coming in and out. And then it took me quite a while to get it set back right. So it is kind of a finicky thing. But in my experience, once you have this tracking good, you should also not very regularly have to adjust to this one either. But if you have to, you have to. This is the one that you focus on. And I'll also mention, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but I've stuck with the blades Woodland Mill cells. So I've never had any other type of blade on here. Um, I've heard that could could uh, mess up the tracking if you put a new type of blade on, but I've used all the same type of blades and ever since I kind of messed around with it there, um, it's probably been 
six or seven months since I've done that and I've never had to touch this again so that's just kind of a point of reference um, I can't really speak to other people's experiences but that's my experience so let's hop into it here I go around and you get I they say that the blade can be just proud of the back here I usually just run my fingers around both wheels and get it flush with the back. I find that has been working out good for me. Around to the back here and tension the blade up. It even has a sticker to show you that, I'll move it way out so you can see, but there's this part here and you wanna get it right in flush inside the, the bigger cylinder. So you just basically keep tightening it up and once you get it in flush, I'm good there. I come in here and you just go by hand and you just start spinning it around. And I usually, you know, give it a few few spins just to see what's going to happen and I'm staying good everywhere so as usual I know that the blades tracking perfectly for right now okay so now that we've went over all of that let's get to what you really want to see I'm assuming is how to actually adjust the tracking on the sawmill if your tracking is going out of alignment. So for me to demonstrate that, I'm going to have to go against my better judgment and actually throw this mill out of alignment on purpose just so I can show you guys what that looks like and how to do that. And then I will hope that I can get it back to exactly where it is now. <laughs> Before I go ahead and throw this out of alignment, I'm gonna do one step that I feel is very important. It says it in the manual too, so I would pay attention to this. It's an easy thing to overlook or forget about, but please try to remember that these blade guides, um, if you have them set up just a millimeter or so behind the blade as they're supposed to be, that if your blade's not tracking properly, these can heavily influence that on you. So, in other words, um, if you can't figure out why you can't get the blade tracking properly, that if you're forgetting about that, it could play a big role in, in it because it acts like a backstop kind of thing. So if your blade's wanting, you know, if it's not in alignment and it's wanting to come backwards, these could be kind of hindering that. And then when you're kind of slowly testing it out by hand, you might not notice it so much. And then when you get it up to speed or something, it might come all uh, flying off on you or something like that. So just something to keep in mind that these can heavily influence. So they're on this one here, I'm sorry I can't get the camera in closer, but um, there's some tight spots on this mill to get a camera into. You just kind of move it back out of the way. And then there's a bolt on the bottom of this one. And just move them back out of the way as far as you can so that it'll just like give you a lot better visual. If the blade wants to come backwards, that'll allow it to come backwards. That's what you want. You want the blade to be tracking properly without the aid of anything basically. So just thought I'd show you getting those out of the way. Now I'm ready to go up, throw this out of alignment. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I've seen it on some other people's videos and I think it's a very smart idea and will help me once I get done with this demonstration is I'm just going to put like a mark like this and then that should hopefully make it a lot easier on myself to get this back in the same spot once I'm done doing this. And I think it'll also be kind of like a cool little visual aid for you guys to see how little of a uh, movement can make a big difference. So guys, 18 millimeter wrench to do this. Um, if you're not familiar, as far as I know, everything on this mill is in mill or er, is metric. So, what I'm going to do is 
move this out a little bit and that should technically make the blade move out so we'll see if I'm right about that or not all right so that's all snugged up so there's my marks now I've moved them I'd say you know it's about an eighth of an inch off now so I'm gonna go around to the front and get everything tensioned up again and let's see if that makes a difference all right so I'll come in I'll just check that we're all flush on both of these wheels again and I'm just gonna tension the blade up to flush on the back here again this will be the moment of truth let's see what happens all right so let's see what that did to my blade tracking I'm trying to get you in there as close as you can Okay, so I'm not going to go too much further. I know it doesn't look uh, too bad down there. But if I show you kind of up here, I can already see just within not even getting like a full rotation of the uh, band wheel that you can probably tell just from here which isn't too bad up in there there's you know it's all, almost getting close to coming off the band wheel up here and it's still way on down there so um, that's kind of the demonstration that I can already tell that this is gonna fly right off the front within you know if I turned it one more full time the the uh, blades gonna come right off so so that's how finicky that adjustment is. You just move it even an eighth of an inch and it immediately just makes it so the blade's gonna come off in about you know one full rotation. Um, on the flip side, that's because I moved it to the right. So that's gonna, or out from the mill, that's gonna make the blade go out. If I had have moved it the other way, that would have made the blade come back in. So, what I'm going to do now is let's try moving my marks back in line with each other and see if I can get it set up right again. All right, so just keep in mind to get all the tension back off the blade because this won't be uh, working right for you if you, you still have tension on the blade. But you want to loosen this. We're going to head back in the direction we came from try to get my marker. Luckily I marked this with a marker so it should be make it easy on me, hopefully easy on me getting this moved back into the right spot. Sorry I'm bumping the camera there but just reaching around it. Uh, all right that looks like my marks are lined up but like I say this thing can be pretty particular that's why I always recommend uh, not adjusting the other side unless you call Woodland Mills because I know it can feel like you've uh, really tried getting this side aligned every which way and you're almost tempted to go mess with the other side. Don't do it. Trust me, don't do it. Just call Woodland Mills if you can't get this figured out, but um, just kind of... And it, just me telling you, um, it is really particular. So, you know, if you're having trouble, don't be afraid to get, you know, just even turn these bolts a eighth of a turn, a sixteenth of a turn, like really go in very, very small increments. Once you're getting close, don't think like, you know, you can move it in eighth inch increments left or right because that's actually like a huge difference on this mill like you want to really really once you start getting it 
close you want to really really go in small increments so even though I think I have these marks lined up I might have to still go one way or the other a tiny bit but we'll see I'm gonna tension the blade back up again and I'll show you what I'm looking at okay so I got the blade tension back up again and so I'll try to bring you guys in here do the same thing over again And I'll, so we're looking better. I'll just give it a quick check. So I'm just proud of the back of the band wheels right now. So I'll just keep going. So far, so good. Okay, I think that uh, that should basically give me enough confidence that this is tracking well now. I've spun it around a bunch of different times, but you get the idea. If it, if it had have been still coming out, you know, really slowly, I would have just moved it a bit more, but that should be good. And then last step, while you still have tension on the blade, move your blade guides back in. I usually just move them in until they hit the blade. And then you just want to push it back just a tiny bit so that uh, it's, there's a roller in there. You just don't want it rolling on the roller all the time. But if it runs into a bunch of pressure, then you have a good backstop. And... You just want to make sure the blade's running through, not touching anything. So I'll get that set up nice and straight. Right there. And then I'll just tighten that with by hand or for right now. Grab my 17 mil wrench. And I'll tighten it right up. And then you just do the same thing to the other side. All right guys, so just to recap, in case it's still not clear, like I said at the start of the video, you want those two band wheels in perfect alignment so the blade runs over both of them kind of evenly, if that makes sense. So when you saw me adjusting at the back there, what I was actually doing was both of the band wheels were perfectly in line. And then what I did was purposely throw one. Now I'm going to exaggerate this for visual purposes, but I threw one on a big angle like this. So then obviously if you could imagine the band wheel going around or the blade going around this band wheel evenly, then it gets up to here and it's kind of riding over it on an angle and that's obviously after a few re revolutions gonna make the blade want to come off so then i went back again and i moved to this back to perfectly even and that gets the blade running perfectly even over both of them again so i hope that demonstration kind of showed you how the tracking on this mill works i understand like a lot of people have different issues with it and i said i'm not an expert i can show you this if you got your mill from the factory in good condition and everything's 
made the way it's supposed to be made that should be all there is to blade tracking it is tedious um i don't want to overstate enough how tiny tiny increments can make a difference on this um you saw me there i only moved it an eighth of an inch and the blade just immediately before i even make a full turn almost wants to come right off the band wheel so if you're having problems where it's coming forward so you move it back the other way and then it's moving backwards and then forwards uh really just take your time and just go in you know really really tiny increments like that should be a good way to know you're getting close as if the the blade wants to come off the front and then you adjust it and then it wants to go off the back you know you're close so just start going in very very small increments one way or the other and eventually it should line up and you it should stop moving back or forth and just continue on uh, the same res revolution and the other thing is sometimes it might take don't get discouraged right off the bat if you start spinning the wheel and it moves a, a little bit sometimes it, it it might take a tiny bit of turning for that blade to find the track that it wants to so in other words you might have it lined up but when, like say you put the um, blade flush with the back of the band wheels all around tighten up the tension and you start moving it and it moves back you know a sixteenth of an inch or something like give yourself a few turns just to see how that's going to end up because sometimes you might flush the blade out with the band wheels and it might move back a bit but then settle there and uh, that's kind of what my blade does here like I usually flush it out with the back with my hands then when I put the tension up give it a couple revolutions the blade will actually move back a tiny bit on me but then find where it wants to ride around the the band wheels and then it, it'll just keep going in, on the same track over and over again after that so then I know I'm good so that's just another piece of food for thought but Anyways, without rambling on too long, I hope that that kind of showed you how you should be able to set up the tracking if everything else on your mill is set up properly. If you have any bigger problems, just call Woodland Mills. They'll be happy to talk to you about it. Anyways, guys, that's going to be everything for me today. Really appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.